11 o'clock, good morning, the fifth Sunday of the month, which means Chai and Y happens from a lab at CIFR. Today, we are at the photon lab, F-O-P-O-N, not the particle of light, but photon as its fundamental optic and terahertz and optical nanostructures. Now, that's a big mouthful. But to tell us about it, it's going to be Professor Sri Ganesh Prabhu, who is here. Hello, oh, wow. good morning. Nice yes. glasses. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> they are for... I think there's a lot of laser stuff that's going to happen. Yes. And uh, Professor Prabhu and his students, who are at all these experimental setups you see behind me, are going to take you into the world of light. Not light as in visible light, but light in the terahertz region, which he will explain. So before I uh, hand it over to uh, uh, Sri Ganesh Prabhu to show him the lab, let me tell you that uh, he's actually a Mumbaiker. He did his um, uh, BSc from Rupparel College, which is another China venture anyway, and then uh, did a master's in Pune, but he decided Mumbai is the best place. Came back, did a PhD in TIFR, and as is you know, very common, once you're in TIFR, you just love TIFR. So after doing a postdoc at Georgia and like, in other places, he came back here and set up the first lab for terahertz optics and terahertz spectroscopy. And that's what we're going to be seeing today. So um, um, without much ado, it's going to be over to you. And by the way, if you're watching on YouTube uh, and Zoom, please remember that the only way we know when your questions are is from the chat. So please remember to put your questions in the chat. We have volunteers monitoring it and we will take your questions. Okay. So uh, now I'm going to get out of here because I don't have laser goggles. <laughs> no, no, we have enough. <laughs> um, um, so, but, but it's, it's uh, better. I'll monitor the questions and, and look sure. at the Thank you. Thank and, you. Uh, just remember uh, from next month, uh, May and June are our summer specials where we have lots of hands on activities at Chai and Y. So keep following us and keep coming. Meanwhile, it's the photon lab. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Arunab. Thank you for such a kind uh, introduction. And all of you are welcome. Good morning. And on such a Sunday, you are spending your invaluable time for uh, your interest and for visiting our laboratory. I'm very, very much thankful to you. As we said, my name is Shri Ganesh Prabhu. I am from, uh, I studied in Ruparel. I'm a Mumbaiker. And today I have a set of all these wonderful people. Uh, who have been working with me and they have been enriching me. And one thing I will also tell you, Professor Arunav Bhattacharya, who is conducting this entire program, the marvelous Chai and Y program, and a lot of people uh, make, always tell me, oh, they know you, you are from uh, Arunav Sir's uh, uh, institute where he's running this Chai and Y. So he's so famous. And uh, it's a great honor and pleasure for me to show you around today what kind of things that we do, what kind of things we have developed. And so let me first come to you. So this is the lab. I will eventually see each and every uh, instrument of this, whatever setup that we have measured uh, or built. And now here is uh, Ajinkya. Hello. Ajinkya Punjar. So he's a, a student working uh, with us. And he has been also very much active setting up many things. So Ajinkya, how are you? Good morning. I'm fine, sir. Like Sunday so, morning, very yes. energetic. So thank you for coming on Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah, I know you people work very late uh, in the night. Uh, today also morning, you people went back and again you are back in the lab. So I will introduce each one of uh, these students. So, uh, what do you have? Do you can you tell us something about uh, uh, our laboratory? You have some presentation. Yes. So fine. We'll walk through the presentation. What we do. What what. What we do, all this science and all, we'll just go to walk through the. Science. Okay, great. great. So, tell me. So, I'll so this. Uh, okay, so now we are going to show this to all the. So everybody can hear us well. I hope so. And if you have any questions, as Arunab sir said, you can uh, write it in the chat of YouTube, and uh, he will tell us, and I will uh, immediately try to answer. So yes. So. So, okay. So, I'll walk through the presentation. So, Photon at Work. So, it's the India's first Karat lab set by Professor Prabhu in 90s. So, so what is, what is uh, Karat? 
So Tanart is basically the conjunction between electronics and photonics. So now for electronics guys, so it's like the frequencies are reaching up up to 10 raised to 9 gigahertz, like say our i5, i7 processor. These are reaching, these are reaching like 5 gigahertz kind of speed. Now beyond that, that's the fundamental limit for electronics. Now what happens for the photonics guys? They say like these frequencies are very, very uh, small. So how can we generate a terahertz from a petahertz kind of wavelength? Say, this, this are uh, really difficult. So now there's a gap between electronics and photons. So this is where the terahertz gap lies in. Now we do this gap. So why this research is very interesting. But why there is a gap? Because uh, it should be just uh, continuous, no? Is there any issue? Yeah, it's continuous, but the available technology instruments are not so adequate to bridge the gap. So we are here to do the research to bridge the gap. Okay, so you mean to say that there are no high power sources available or detectors available like in uh, electronics or in uh, uh, laser photonics? That is what you are yes. saying? Yes. Okay, so you are going to walk us through this, what kind of efforts that we put in everything? Yes. Okay. So, so the let's say one of one of the hottest application of the terahertz is the six G, the millimeter wave technology. Now I tell you, so there, there is one G, which was already there. Like people used to talk on walkie talkies and this kind uh, this kind of devices. Now later it went to two G. Now in two G, what have happened is basically now we can text uh, have text messages, we can call people, we can do lots of things using two G. But and now we are getting socializing in the internet world. So internet started blooming when the 2G just came into the picture. Now what has came is like 3G. Now in 3G what has happened is like we are already socially connected, but now we can do video calling, we can play video games, like say City Village on Facebook. I used to play a lot City Village on the Facebook. It was my one of the uh, like I used to play every day the City Village game. So this is because of 3G. Now so then, games, right? yeah. Yes, these yeah, are games yeah, of my childhood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So now then later it came to be the 4G. So in 4G now the speed has increased. Now the computation power also because of the technology also finally developed. Now people can play like CSGO kind of games very quickly, low latency kind of thing. But still there's a bottleneck. We cannot go as speed as like just real time. So it's got cash speed also, right? So it's 4G ka speed hota hai, it's around 100 of megabit per second, but not as speed as what we can use for gaming. So if I have to transfer, say, one movie, which is like uh, one or two gigabytes, so kitna time like that? Oh, it will, take, it will take like almost 15 to 30 minutes. That's my okay. So that is too slow. Na? That is too okay. slow, yeah. So now what comes is 5G. So the current technology, what we have is the 5G. So in 5G, what happens is the latency is very less. Now the speed has reached gigabit per second, but it's not real time. We need almost real time. Like if things happen, it should go. Like in stock market, if uh, the things changes in New York, it should just replicate in London. So these are still slow. So now, if you have a movie, if you have two or four gigabytes, how much will transfer it? So how much time will it take? Within a minute. Within a minute. Huh? Okay. It's like a gigabit kind of speed. So in 6G, how much will it take? Okay, now the question is 6G. Now, 5G has introduced gigabit per second. Uh, what can be the, the terabit per second? Tera, terahertz, the sound speed in there? Yeah, so basically 6G is the next uh, communication generation in which we use terahertz wavelength. And this is one of the applications of terahertz. And people around the world do research on 6G, finding out faster ways, faster IP to have the 6G communication. So, if we high density movie, if we transfer it to 5 gigabyte or 10 gigabyte, so that's what we have You just blink the eyes. So, go on. So, in a second, it will be in one second. Yes. Right, okay, so this terahertz looks very, very promising. So, terahertz. Yes. XYB millimeter wave technology. Okay. So, now one of the another application is terahertz imaging. So, if I tell you like what this uh, man is carrying around, how, how will it figure out? So we have metal detectors at the security, but the coin is also better. It will also beep. So what we can do is that is like can we quantitatively say what he is carrying around? 
So now, if I take a Tarak image of a man, I can see a gun he is carrying at the back. There is a dagger as well. Then there is another gun. Then there is a belt with a metal hook. Now I can quantify what he is carrying around. So, so he is not going inside the body, right? He is not going inside the body. He is going inside the body. So, he is only looking at the surface. Yes. But I can always say, why can't I use X-rays? X-rays basically... एक्सेल इज जाएगा बॉडी के अंदर बॉडी वो बोन का इमेज नहीं लेगा बट वी आर नॉट इंटरेस्टेड इन बोन इमेजिंग वी आर इंटरेस्टेड इन व्हाट इज कैरिंग अराउंड एंड एक्सेल ऑलवेज यू सी दिस क्वेश्चन सिंबल आउटसाइड द एक्सेल रूम व्हाई बिकॉज़ इट विल आयनाइज इट विल अल्टर आवर जीन सो इट्स हार्मफुल सो दैट्स व्हाई सो टेरार्ड से कैंसर वगैरह नहीं हुआ ना सेल वगैरह का द रिसर्च इज गेट गोइंग ऑन बट इन माय ओपिनियन इट्स अ मिली इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट काइंड ऑफ एनर्जी सो एंड वेयर एज एक्सेल So there's a gap of 10 to the power 9. It's a gap. So the energies are very small, so it may not be really ionized. Uh, but it so looks very promising. Looks promising. Okay, wonderful. That's very nice. So we we'll go further. So this is the uh, Karaj typically what we did in our lab. So this is the old 500 rupee note. And if we see the sunlight, we used to see Gandhi chi. And this is how people used to say this is authentic note. Yeah, that is the watermark. Watermark. So if we take a Tarhat image, we can really see Gandhi ji is really present in the thing, and we can see through Tarhat wavelength. Okay, so you can find out fake notes from uh, this. Yes. So that's a big thing, right? Yeah. Uh, that's great. I think uh, this has again a nice promise. Okay. So and this is another image. What we have done in the lab is like we have taken a brown paper, we have folded it, and we have kept a leaf in leaf in it. So now, basically, uh, it is really hidden uh, leaf inside yes. a brown envelope. Yes, basically in optical wavelength, like if I take a paper and if I fold it, I cannot really see what's inside it. Okay. But the heart can see what's inside the paper. So this and is, why there is a uh, height and what are those uh, blackish lines in okay. between? This has a contrast where the water uh, water content is mostly present. So now by studying this water content, biologists can quantify whether how much old this leaf is and what are the other properties of this leaf and all. Okay, so that means along the ages, the uh, evaporation is more so. Yes. Uh, okay, so okay. it's more transparent, whereas in between the absorption is uh, the evaporation is slower. That's why we see we absorb kind of blackish color. And all those veins of water uh, you can clearly see. Is that uh, okay? Yeah. Ah. Okay. So, oh, that's great. I think it has a lot of fun. Okay, this is one of the applications. Now let's walk into the next application. Now I have a very unique uh, fingerprint. You have a very unique fingerprint. Can we have our molecules as well? We should. Oh. We, should we should have. So, so what? Oh, what is this white powder? So you tell me, can it be solved? Looks like a talcum powder. Or abhi to ghamoniya ka season hai. So, wo powder lag raha hai. But can it be RDX? Very well, RDX is also high. Right. Uh, so now if I mix RDX, calcium powder, uh, salt, all these things, how can you quantify? Correct. This is really difficult. Now people will fool around and say, this is calcium powder, this is not RDX. So we have to quantify it. So in Tara, these are like molecules, these are like inorganic molecules. Everyone has its own resonance frequency. If I vibrate, I have my own natural frequency. If you vibrate, See, you have own natural frequency. So every inorganic molecule has its own natural frequency. Now what happens is this resonance frequency lies in Terhard's region. Now by stress absorption in this mountain, we can say what kind of material is really present inside the material. Okay, so each of these mountains represent a kind of a different color. In every frequency is like a color. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Every frequency is a color. So at every color, it has a different transmission property. Now from that we can quantify what is what. If I mix a calcium powder and RDX, I can say like this is RDX. In near future we can also quantify how much percentage of RDX is present. Oh, that's wonderful. So you can clearly see RDX and HMX uh, spectra very different from yes. each other. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. So from this you can identify. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's very nice. That's very promising. Yes. Um, how? What do you think? Uh, I'm just cross section of F35. Do you know F35 what it is? No, what is F35? F35 is the most advanced uh, plague of America. 
So now what happens is they they are they have put it the so body. It's a stealth uh, fighter. It's a stealth fighter. So, so you cannot be seen uh, by radar. Radar, but we can see through terahertz. So what happens is basically these people have designed for all the levels, but they have missed the terahertz level. But if someone smartly have a terahertz radar, they can actually see the aeroplane. Oh, so we should develop it quickly so yes. we can quickly <laughs> see this. Okay, so there is a uh, why that color is like that for that aeroplane. Oh, it has it is a polymer coated on top of it so that it absorbs all the wavelength or reflects all the other wavelengths. But they have missed the terahertz wavelength. So basically, if I I am having a radar and I send uh, light or a radar pulses to it, it will not come back to me. Is that it what you mean? Would come back to radar. It is uh, uh, reflected in other directions. So then it means it is not visible to the radar. Yes. Okay, so it is become invisible. Yes. So this RCS is radar cross section. Yes. Okay. So I by know. this RCS, we can actually see what kind of aeroplanes are present in the in the sky. Oh, wonderful! So that is how you track huh? all the planes and their movements. Yes. Okay. There is a question: What is HMX in the earlier? Ah, uh, HMX is very similar compound to RDS. It's also explosive. Okay. तो वो फर्दर लाइक हो गए डिफेंस तो बहुत हो गया कम्युनिकेशन भी बहुत हो गया कुछ मेडिकल एप्लीकेशन भी चाहिए अरे वही मेडिकल तो सबके लिए चाहिए यस सो मेडिकल एप्लीकेशन में क्या नाउ दिस इज अ प्रिंट ऑफ अ नॉर्मल पेपर यू सी दिस इज अ नाइस वेरी आई कैन सी पेपर्स एंड ऑल ऑल दिस थिंग्स सो दिस टेल्स अस द वाटर कंटेंट हाउ मच वाटर कंटेंट इज प्रेजेंट इन माय फील्ड नाउ व्हाट आई डू इज लाइक आई टेक इमेज ऑफ अनदर पर्सन पर्सन ओके सो Now I can say like this person is pre-diabetic. Is it? How? Because pre-diabetic patient in the food they have very less water content, and if we take a like, map of the food, we can always say like how much water content is present, and we can give a warning like you are a pre-diabetic, please have a care. Oh, so that's a great uh, thing. I mean, just by scanning this, uh, we can figure out yes. like who is diabetic, non-diabetic. Yes, like you, you just walk in, you they the algorithm. Figure out the technology and figure out whether you are diabetic or non-diabetic. Oh, wonderful! That's a very nice application, and okay. it is also you are not uh, taking out anybody's blood or not. Oh, nothing, nothing. This is non-contact. Those kind of tests. So that is very Completely nice. Completely non-contact. Oh, wonderful! This is non-contact. Oh, yes. so that's excellent. Yeah. So yeah. this is one of the application of therapy in medical. So for further applications, much more in different. Another and, question. Huh? How do you distinguish between? Uh, water or moisture in the muscle and the blood. The other factor is between the water content, right? The ah, question is about the question is between blood, which ah. is also a fluid, hmm. and the uh, water. Okay, okay, so the speciality of like water is also present on the in, uh, uh, on the skin as well as in the blood. Now, what happens is carotid is not transparent to the skin because our skin has uh, multiple layers and few layers are very absorbing. So tarat can trans, uh, transmit inside, and it doesn't detect uh, uh, blood. It sees the surface. So basically, what you are saying is, uh, it, it, since it cannot penetrate, and anyway, that is also a great thing because then you, it's a safe uh, radiation to yes. use. So what you are saying is, whatever is on the surface of the skin, that is all it is detecting, and these are very specific to that pre-diabetic people where the water contains uh, out, say out. Part of this skin, yes. So yes. that is how. Okay. Oh, no. Again, the question is: We are only looking at the moisture content in the skin, and that means enough conclusive evidence to call somebody a pre-diabetic or healthy or confirmed diabetic. Okay, so we need lots and lots of data. data. Right? The research is going on. So, so this is one possibility. One of the possibilities. So maybe we use artificial intelligence, oh, and we teach the machine uh, with several millions of uh, such data, then yes. we will be able to figure this out. Yes. Okay. So we have to have a large data large set to data. quantify. This is one of the application which is published in the, some one of the journals. Journal. So oh, wonderful. Okay. That's so great. For further applications, like sir, I already explained in last year's time why you can have a look uh, to that time one. Okay. So. We'll go further. Now, what is this time domain spectroscopy? Okay, so time domain spectroscopy sounds very complex, but it is very. Now you think of something which is varying in time. So any frequency which is varying in time. So sorry, any signal which is varying in time, we can call it time domain. And what do we mean by spectroscopy? Basically, you resolve all the frequencies or all the wavelengths. 
or all the color all the color okay. so basically you measure all the colors in time okay so this looks there are looks like a colorful uh, thing yes. okay so now i walk through our setup which says how to map all these colors in time domain okay so we we'll initially start with a femtosecond laser for uh, femtosecond is like 10 power minus 15 all the energy are uh, uh, contained in this 10 power minus 15 uh, seconds kind of uh, pulses in time so it runs at 80 megahertz repetition rate and it's a 10 femtosecond laser so now what we have is like a beam comes out of a laser it's a mode lock pulse then there's a mirror which directs the beam to the setup now this setup beam filter Now what beam splitter does is like we split the beams into two parts. One goes for sampling, another goes for uh, generation of the terror, generation of terrar. So one one part goes for generating the terrar. Now this is something called as PCA, photoconducting catena. What do you mean by really photoconducting? Now that I explain my upcoming. Okay, so here you are generating the uh, terrar light. Okay, so that light now you will pass through. Okay. Okay. So now this is now, photoconducting antenna. We generate a terrar. Now the terrar is generated. Now for comparison, 800 nanometer and the terrar wavelengths are like terrar wavelengths are like from 3 mm to uh, 150 200 microns. Whereas the input beam is like 800 nanometer. So we are essentially converting 800 nanometer to millimeter wave. Okay. So, so from red uh, light, you are converting it into a very very far infrared light. Yes. That's what. Okay. Yes. So now we it comes in a conical shape. So we have two parabolic mirrors which actually collimates the beam and focuses the beam. Then we keep our sample at a focus point. So after keeping the sample at a focus point, again it starts the uh, this uh, like dispersing. So what we do is like we use another two sets of parabolic mirror to collimate and again focus on one crystal that is generally zinc telluride. So zinc telluride is for detection of terrors. It's a special crystal which can uh, give rise to this signal. Is that yes. what you mean? Okay. So the uh, another uh, another beam which goes to, uh, through a delay stage uh, comes to for the zinc telluride. Now what happens is from beam splitter to zinc telluride, we have to match the distance. Okay. So the distance the light is traveling along one uh, path and an- along another path, you have to match. Match it. Okay. Now for numbers like this is a 10 centimeter second beam in space. And these uh, lengths are like in meters. So basically, we have to match this distance down to few microns. Few microns. Few micrometers. So micron is like uh, you know one hundredth of the width of our hair. Is yes. that okay? Yes. Okay. So you are saying a meter that is almost the size of say this uh, table mm-hmm. or height of this table. You want to match it to one hundredth of the size of Here, yes, on two sides. So that's a quite a bit of accuracy required. Yes, that's a quite a bit of accuracy required. That's what we specialize in. Okay, wonderful. So <laughs> that's very nice. Now, after passing, what happens is like when there are photons in the element, there is something called as electro-optic uh, sampling. So what what the terrar does is like terrar induces some bioreferences in the crystal. Now, what, what is bioreferences? Bioreference is basically you generate some anisotropy, like different uh, direction of the crystal will have different refractive index. Now, if you have two different refractive index, basically what happens is like one of the pulse gets delayed and another polarization of the pulse gets lagged. Now, now there can be one one is leading, another is lagging. Okay, so then you basically look at the other uh, pulse and then. Okay. Okay. Uh, Now what happens is like initially our beam is linearly polarized. Linearly polarized, our electric field is oscillating in only in one direction. Now when the terrar is there and the probe, this sampling beam which comes on the zinc telluride, its polarization changes slightly. Okay. Okay. Now you can, and uh, depending on the uh, terrar field, it will change it. Uh, it will rotate it. Yes. And then that rotation, how will you detect? Now this rotation are like few micro radian, so to be they are very very small. They are very small. They are so extremely they are like small. Another set of uh, optics. Optics. And, uh, so uh, what we do is like now the ch- there is a change in polarization. So what we do is that before generating the art, we have something called as quarter wave play. So what quarter wave play does is like we put a linear polarization. It generates a circular kind of polarization. Now if there is a circular polarization, now 
I know like I can split this circular polarization into two orthogonal components. Now I split this into two orthogonal components and put on the balance photodiode. Okay, and that is how you detect oh. that. Now, if the there is changing polarization, it may not be really the circular polarization. It may be slightly linear. Now, when you separate out two components, one of the components may be more, one of the components may be small. But why do you have this delay stage? So, oh, delay stage is basically now what happens is uh, uh, you have to scan the beam around the first beam. So, there is no electronic development that can measure this. Now, well, these things are working at petard frequency. You need a petard kind of uh, electronic. Oh, that's why you are using this? Delay uh, stage. What? Okay, now in delay stage, what happens is like this pulse comes in and it goes. It follows like uh, some path, like it moves at the speed of light. And uh, if you calculate the distance, we can be uh, like say 1 mm is corresponds to 6.67 picoseconds. Okay. So if you do this delay stage by 1 mm, it corresponds to 6.67 picoseconds. So light travels in one second how many kilometers? It's 3 to 10 power 8 meters. So it's uh, 3 to 10 power kilometers. 5 kilometers. 3 lakh kilometers. And this is uh, 300 micron in, uh, so that means this is of the order of 3 hair width. Yes. So that much, 1 picosecond is that much small. Yes. Time. Okay. And that so you are able to repeat this slide. With this slide? With this slide. Again, like, why do you need a delay? And how do you introduce the delay? Okay. So, I'll just go to next slide. So what happens is like initially uh, my uh, retroflector was uh, in some position. Now I move this retroflector slightly behind. Now by the by the distance P. Essentially the light is light travels two times of distance. So it's two D. Can you show how it is traveling two times? So okay. it's, uh, initially uh, it was traveling this much. Now it is traveling to the complete path. Oh. Now if you move uh, this this uh, retroflector by one mm. And do some math, you derive that 1 mm corresponds to 6.67 picosecond. Oh, or 300 micron if I move, or 150 micron if I move, overall the uh, distance I think it is traveling is 300 micron. Yes. And that is how you introduce the, yeah, the delay. delay. Time delay in 2 bits. Oh, okay. So that's this is a, a nice thing. That's, nice that's a very nice thing. Huh? Yes. Okay. So in the second thing, you just move by a delay. 1 mm, you move by few oh. picosecond. Okay. So that is uh, something like you want somebody to be late, so you make that person walk a bit longer. Yes, uh, yes, okay. it's the same okay. analogy. Okay. Yeah, oh, that is wonderful. And this is the uh, one picosecond, that is one, almost uh, 10 to 12 times shorter, shorter. Uh, time that you are able to detect. Right, just the movement by 150 or 0.1 millimeter. Yes, and uh, you have such uh, stepper motors, or do you have such? Machines which are available, which can move this. Yes. So, so how much precision they can move? So we have uh, stages which move from say 100 nanometers precise by a flow. So 100 nanometer is how much? Uh, it's like one tenth of a micron, and a micron is like 100 times. So it is one thousandth of a hair width. Yes. So that much precision uh, stages you have. Yes. Right? Okay. So to move very precisely in some to second time scale, before second time scale, you need a very precise stages. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah, okay. So this is how the setup looks like. Now, so okay. So can we have a? Are you going to have any demo? First, I'll show you a video. Okay. Then we'll go to the actual setup. Okay. Will, that sounds good. Okay. Sounds okay. Good. So that's a video. Now, basically, this is like the polarization which is coming out of the laser, which I have explained earlier as well. Now, the beam uh, hits to the, uh, like, it, it is very similar. Now, that's like beam splitter. Now, the beams are separated into two parts. One beam is here, one beam is here. Now, this beam goes in another part, this beam goes into another part. Now, if you, this travels in a separate part. One beam is meant for generating current, another beam is meant for actually sampling the current. So what happens so is, this is where now this the is, where is generated. It passes through the sample and again collimated by another parabolic filter. So this beam, uh, this is like sampling. Okay, so now this is the this is collimated terahertz beam. Now this collimated terahertz beam and the probe, which is this path and the terahertz path, they are collinear. collinear. They come in the same time in the same path. Now you see. Polarization is uh, horizontal or in linear, we can say. Now, after passing through the detection crystal, 
the polarization does not remain linear it slightly changes because it is circular look yes. like it's exaggerated but it changes okay so once we pass through a quarter wave plate and then split by wolofsom prism we can have two identical components and do a balanced photo detection oh, wonderful so this is how you uh, look at the changes yes. uh, that are happening in the two intensity yes okay so this is a very nice way of so this is how you are generating the terra okay so this is there are two ways we generate terra in the lab one is uh, using optical rectification that is big telluride right? so in big terms what we can say is like a femtosecond beam has a spectral width so it's not like a single or single frequency a diode laser like a single frequency it has a width now you can imagine there is a different frequency between these two waves within its spectral limit so, so if i put a ray uh, beam into a crystal i can generate a double of that yes we can generate double a double of that that is called a second harmonic generation so but here we are we are doing optical rectification so it's basically different frequency different. we can also have a some frequency some frequency okay so once you can have some frequency you can also can have, have different, different frequency so this is a different frequency different frequency okay, okay. so, so within each band within each band okay, okay and this is one of the way we do we'll have a light demonstration shortly but another way what we do is like uh, photoconducting antenna what is photoconducting antenna it what is this is Okay, I will show you all the four pictures. So these are photoconducting antenna at a different time. Say in femtosecond time scale, the beam the beam is moving at a speed of light, and this is so a so that ray light is basically the beam that is pulsed which is coming in. And yes. Using, okay. And what are those uh, golden uh, triangles? Okay, those are packs which are made up of gold germanium. And what happens is like whenever there is a light on a say something it can be conducted for example gallium arsenide. I shine a light on the gallium arsenide and now I generate free carriers. Now if there are free carriers, I will try to accelerate it. How will you accelerate? So I apply a bias. Bias I can apply by a battery or maybe a function generator. But where will you put battery here? So I'll put the battery across this path. Across those two paths. Okay. And I keep a gap in between. Acha. And that is where you are putting the light. Yes. Oh, so okay. now they generate all the charge carrying in the in the in, gap. in the gap. And now by applying the bias, now the carriers accelerate and produces some kind of radiation. That radiation is a terahertz radiation. Okay. So you are saying basically you are using that accelerated charges are radiating yes. the light. So that that light is uh, you are calling terahertz. Terahertz. Okay, okay. That's what we detect in the lab. So, oh, so this is how the pulse looks. So, yes. what is this uh, black pulse? pulse? Okay. okay, so black pulse is a reference pulse. Now, what I do is like I insert some sample, and if I insert the sample, the pulse uh, changes like it shifts in time. Is it? Why is that? Now, can we see this? We can see this. Okay. Okay. So, so you are having oh, pulse. Oh, okay. Thank you. Great. So, who is going to Uh, that to me. Okay. Yes. So you are Rupuraj. Yes, sir. Okay. So let's go to the setup. Hello, Rupuraj. Yes. So he is Rupuraj Purani. Hello. So now we are trying for us to put the goggles because we are working with the high power laser. So, where are you from? I'm from Pune. I'm a bachelor's student actually. I'm doing my B.Tech in Electronics and Telecommunications. But I love terahertz, and I'm working here since last nine months. So you are working with terahertz. Yeah, uh, actually, you are working from microwave to terahertz. terahertz. Yeah, wonderful. So, so I'll you show the ex experimental setup very quickly. So that is the spectroscopic synergy. Yeah, this is the laser source, basically okay. oscillator laser. And Ajink has explained the principles to you, so I'll just show the experimental setup. So our beam comes from here. So this boy from here, yeah, yeah hole, from right? this hole. Where does your beam generate? Beam is generating in this laser. Uh, okay. This is the oscillator laser. It is running at 80 mega uh, hertz, basically 80 mega hertz. Uh, 80 million per second. Yeah, 80 yeah, per million per, okay. per second. That so is 8 crore per second. Wow. Yeah. And uh, the pulse width is extremely short. It is up to seven femtoseconds or something. So that is extremely short pulse, and uh, this beam comes from here. I'll show you one by one. I'll open this. Okay, thank you. So as Ajink has explained, it, so this is a beam splitter. From here, the beam will split in two parts. One will go for sampling the terahertz, and one will go for generating the terahertz. 
so this is the generation path we have used the photoconductive antenna this is a commercial one photoconductive antenna for generating terahertz and this is the sampling path which will basically which is consists of a delay line as ashinka has explained to you and the delay line will scan back and forth to read the entire terahertz pulse this is also known as the readout pulse so from here we focus this uh, sampling path i mean sampling uh, beam and the terahertz beam onto the detector crystal which is at that side but first after the terahertz is generated we place our sample in between so why are these pipes uh, blue pipes running here yeah. yeah so even you can see this container which we have built here at tfr for this setup because water vapor has very high absorption in terahertz so if you just keep the setup open you you won't get any terahertz like promising terahertz all these kind of uh, oh here yeah, so already started something yeah so we have given a scan for you to show you so this is the main terahertz pulse so what the delay stage does is it goes from Like it goes from this point to this point. It scans the entire pulse so that you can get a temporal profile of the terahertz pulse. So this is the work of delay stage. And the point where the terahertz amplitude or uh, field is maximum, we call it, we call it as the zero delay of zero delay or uh, of our stage. So all this is happening in picoseconds. Yeah, yeah. It is, this is what are these oscillations? This is due to the these are due to uh, reflections in the crystals. We usually call them Fabry-Perot oscillations. So they arise due to the thickness of crystal. Okay. This is that kind of terahertz pulse which you see everywhere. Okay. So it is. And this must be of something 10 picoseconds or something. The pulse is very very small. Like very that. very small. Okay. Yeah. And where is it getting detected? Can you show it to me? Yeah. yeah. So you can also see a cryo stack here. This, so this is where you put the sample. Yes. yes. So here I put my sample. The sample is placed between two parabolic mirrors. Okay. And uh, like for example, I was doing a low temperature measurement the other day. So this machine can what? Yeah. So this is a cryo stack. It can go up to four Kelvin temperatures. So I place my sample over here. What is four Kelvin? It is four Kelvin, Kelvin is eight uh, degrees Celsius. So it it is roughly around minus two sixty nine degrees Celsius. Oh, that so is too cold. cold. Too cold. Yeah. So that's why you need all this popping and everything. Yeah. Is it? So okay, okay. I place my sample over here. And then uh, here is the detection part, basically. So this is a quarter wave plate, which will basically convert linearly polarized uh, light to 800 nanometer light to circularly polarized one. This Wollaston prism will split that circular into its S and T. That is the vertical and horizontal polarized part, and then it will fall onto this balanced photodiode. So basically, we call it A minus B detection kind of thing. And then, then this will send a current, and then it will go to our mocking amplifier. So our scientific officer Gajendra sir uh, designed this detector. Like so everything is made here. Yeah, everything is made in TRFR. And now one of our batchmates, Prajwal, he designs the uh, A minus B detectors and power supplies required for it. Extremely low noise power supplies. Oh wow! Completely developed over here. So that is very nice. I yeah. think made in India. Made in India. Ah, very good. Yes. So we should be able to sell it also. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that is what I plan. Long term plan. So uh, hello. Well, this is uh, Doctor Vivek. Uh, Vivek, please. Uh, he is a postdoctorate for uh, postdoctoral person for India. Yeah. So hello, Vivek. You are. Uh, where did you do PhD from? So I did my PhD from Indore University B. J. S. R. And I am working with Dr. Siganesh oh, Prabhu. So, so you are a material expert. Yeah, I am a material expert, and I will tell you uh, what we see in the material in the terra. So this is a new setup. So till now you have seen like we record the terahertz pulse in five minutes or something like that. I will show you the live terahertz. Like you can see, the whole pulse has been recorded in the two minutes, three minutes area. and now here you can see it is going live up and down so you can see i put up something, something i block it and then oh, oh so, so i can put uh, so how is the path of this okay so i will start showing you slowly so from this point we have a, a beam coming optical and then here we have, we have a terahertz generator crystal so, so we put, this is the one which ajitya was saying that it is converting this red light into 
okay fourier transform what is this fourier transform so fourier transform in layman terms we can say like we can convert time domain to frequency domain frequency domain is very much more uh, we are uh, used to see the pulses so basically you are trying to find out all the color information from the time uh, time domain time domain. So okay. time domain doesn't really say like which color is where okay but frequency domain will say like what is the strength of the colors okay so it is like uh, you know you are hearing some hand 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 kind of sound but you don't know which instrument is playing what exactly ah, okay so now you are going to find out in that orchestra who are all playing which instrument yes, and, what, and i can quantify qualitatively how which sound is how much is present okay so can you show that okay so basically now you can think of time uh, fourier transform as like there is something is dig 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 varying in time Okay. So this this is signal. These are the signals. Maybe voltage, maybe sound. It can be anything. Now, if I uh, separate out, I can construct various sine waves and say like, this. what is a sine wave? Sine wave is like infinitely varying signal. So it is a periodic signal. It's a periodic signal. Oh, okay. So so these are all different waves that you are generating. They are going up, down, up, down like this. Okay. So you just constructively add all these. So how can you add those? Can okay, you show? I'll show you a demo. So, so now say suppose I have a that that low sine wave initially. Okay. Okay. Now I take one sine wave. You can see there's a one sine wave in frequency domain. So that is your uh, amplitude or multiplier of the sine wave, is it? Yes. So this is a single frequency sine wave which I have in a time domain. Now okay. Now I will add two terms. Now you will see like there's one frequency, second frequency, where the amplitude of second frequency is much lesser. Much le lesser. Okay. Now when I add these two individual frequency pulses, I see there is something. Uh, oh, so this is how the wave is looking when you add these two waves. Yes. Okay. Now, now can you add third? I add third. Now, okay. It's like something meaningful. Oh. Like, now, now this appears previously it was just oscillating now i see something uh, becoming straighter or something yes. can you go on adding i just go on adding many more terms now does oh. it look very familiar ha huh, it looking like a uh, like a square wave yes. you think it's like a square wave square, square wave. wave can be broken down into some of many sine waves sine waves oh i see adding various wavelengths it's a square wave Oh wow! Now it is almost looking like a on-off, on-off kind of signal. Yes. Okay. Now in frequency domain also, you can see there are like various frequency components which are present. So is this what uh, we are doing in the terrard? So you take one pulse and uh, translate it into this, and this is what we are seeing. Yes. So basically, this is a time domain signal. Now here you cannot see like which colors are present. Correct. It's like a mix. Now if I want to separate the colors, I just need to take a Fourier transform. Oh, so that looks like a very useful Fourier. So, what is Fourier transform? Fourier is the name of a Fourier person. is the name of the scientist, mathematician who gave this transformation, and this is much more used everywhere, like in communication, defense, imaging, uh, many kinds of analysis. Okay, yeah. so you can figure out uh, different frequency analysis. components. Oh, wonderful! That's a very powerful technique. and uh, what is it that you are uh, using this how did you generate this on computer okay so i have generated using lab view what so, is this lab view lab view is a tool which we can like you saw previously the the terra signal coming on the laptop correct mm -hmm. and also on that oscilloscope so is this like an oscilloscope you can say this is like an oscilloscope you can connect multiple devices to the lab view and then so lab view is like a software where you are virtually creating an instrument is yes. it so all oh. the instruments can be controlled like it's a very good tool for doing automation and it it gives a very nice gui oh wonderful. and one interesting fact you know who oh, no lab view was first introduced in india by this lab oh <laughs> so this you. is the history of this lab by introducing the lab to india thank so, you shall we go back to the slide? yes yes please so this is like fourier transform okay. and part fourier is just the algorithm of the fourier transform right. Okay. Now let's go further. Now whatever you have seen previously is a it's very far. Like there are two parabolic mirror which collimates and then you detect using zinc telluride. This is this is called as far field spectroscopy. Okay. Now there is something called as near field spectroscopy. Okay. So the near field looks like what is near field? Near field is like very close to the source 
where the terahertz is generated. So like you generate a terahertz here, and my wavelength is this big. I go very close to the wave uh, source and see what happens. So, so how do you do this on this? Okay, so we have a we have been set up where like we have one more femtosecond laser, where then we split like it's very similar to the terahertz time domain spectroscopy. But I see some seep there which is close to the sample. Yes, so in that the is the difference. In oh. the previous setup, you saw there is a zinc telluride do electro optic sampling. Now what we do is like we use the tip which picks up the electric field which is very close to the yeah. metal. How does that tip look? The tip, uh, we will have a live demonstration to, sure. to the tip. But can you stay and show us this tip? Okay, uh, I'll show you in the previous slide. So now what happens is like the, we mount a uh, sample. We take the sample very close to the tip and we pick up the signals from the sample. It's like okay. from the surface we pick up the field. Okay. So these are like clear field uh, signals. Now, how we do we really do the uh, scanning? Hmm. So this is how the tip looks like roughly. Okay. And uh, you have a like okay. So X and Y component. Sample that is how you sample comes to very close to the tip, and it, we just do a raster scanning. Okay. Now once Wonderful. we do raster scanning, you basically collect the data at each and every point. You okay. take it, move the delay state. Collect the data, store it, store it again, okay. shift the thing, collect the data. Oh, wonderful. So that is a quite a daunting task. Yeah, so yeah. who is going to do this? So okay, let us have a live demonstration of this. So hello. So Utkarsh, what is, can you introduce yourself? Where are you from? Uh, so I am Utkarsh Pandey. Uh, I am from the same college as Rudraj in the final year of college. So we are passionate. And uh, so you uh, people built this. Uh, yes. one, huh. So can you just quickly tell us? He so, has already. Uh, so this, this setup is a near field scanning terahertz microscopy. So in this, what we do is we study all the near field phenomena that occur in uh, various samples or uh, various structures that we fabricate right over here. So what we do is. Uh, where are you generating terahertz? Uh, so what we do is we generate the terahertz through this PCA over okay. here. Okay. At this point, this PCA generates the terahertz, uh, sends the terahertz to these collimating mirrors, these parabolic mirrors, where the beam gets collimated and then falls on this PCA. To look at this PCA, you'll have to focus a bit more. So there is a tip there, you very a, tiny tip. Yes, a okay. Very tiny tip on okay. the triangular part. Okay. So that is the PCA that we use for the detection of these terahertz. Okay. So and then you introduce the sample where? So what we do is, this would be our sample holder. Huh. Like this. And uh, what we do is, we place the sample upon this and place it like this. So the path of the terahertz, as I told you, it's the path of the terahertz is like, uh, comes over here, here and then goes to the PCA. Now after, the, uh, after introducing the sample in between this, uh, it takes the signal through the sample now. Okay. So this is also a child kind of a spectroscopy. And it what is, are those stages? So uh, you will see that there is a uh, this stage one, two, three. One, two, three, three stages. So these are all linear stages. So what linear stages do is they move in one single axis. Okay. So one stage moves in one axis, one moves in other, and the third moves in the other. So we have uh, tried to make a uh, X, Y, and Z axis in that. And so we can move in all three dimensions using that. And that is how we uh, scan the whole surface of the sample uh, whenever we want to do the... So for uh, every scan. position, you are basically uh, on that sample, you are measuring the yes. entire pulse? Yes. So okay. imagine this, that the terahertz beam is coming through air and then we are taking the signal. After the introduction of the sample, and we, for example, this is the near field test and this is the sample. So the sample is very close to the tip. It is as close as one micron or lesser than that. Even. Uh, so we try to keep the sample over here. After the introduction of the sample, the terahertz will come through the sample now. Okay, so it takes data of the sample and then we uh, get the signal from it. Okay, so what type of samples are these? So we fabricate uh, microstructures, meta materials that we do. So meta materials are structures that. Uh, but how do you know about these structures? Do you design that? Somewhere? Yes, so we design the. Uh, all those structures in the lab, uh, in on console uh, on the computation facilities that we have. So we design them here, we fabricate them here, and we test them here. 
So you only optimize yeah. the structure only you uh, yeah. fabricate. So, so we optimize all the structures computationally. Everything is optimized, and then the most optimized version is then fabricated finally. Okay, so there are no trial errors. Yes, you so just have one final sample. Yes. You know what properties to expect yes. or whatever you want. That's what you. Yes. Oh, that's so very. It saves the time a lot. Yeah, of fabricating. That's really wonderful. Yeah. So that's very nice. So can do you have any uh, data? Actually, there is a question. Yes. Uh, here, what do you mean by the sample, and how big the sample is? So, for example, uh, as I said, meta structure. So meta structures are uh, so meta structures or meta structures are samples that uh, scale below the wavelength of uh, the incident radiation. So are, are they like metals or there can be so anything? They can be anything, but uh, the current samples that we measure are metals, and we have uh, the meta structures inside of them. So basically, there are holes, rectangular holes, yes. or different. So uh, you can take an example of this. So this would be the substrate, and we can make patterns inside it, different types of holes, and we can see the interaction of light. Uh, that it has uh, with this sample in the near field. Okay. And and you said that you are keeping things to things Very just close. about a few microns yes. away from it. And yes. how do you maintain this system? So that is what uh, these cages are for. So we move these cages. Uh, so if we move this in this direction, uh, in the left direction, so it will take the sample closer to the tip. And that is how we maintain the distance from the tip. Yes. Yeah. So and actually, the question is. How do you measure the distance, and how do you maintain a particular distance? So the stage that uh, this moves, the leaf count is around 100 nanometers. So it can move with a precision of 100 nanometers. So uh, we have what we do is so that is one one thousandth of a hair width. Yes, that's one. That much precision you can move. Yes. Huh. And how do you know that the tip has come closer? So what we can do is we uh, we can come as close as the as the we want to the tip. So 100 micro, 100 nanometers gives us a very uh, like precise manner to move in the direction of the tip. But do you see this tip and the surface yes, so of the? Uh, I can show you the tip over here. Uh, the light is on, and uh, if you see the laptop over there. Yeah. Yeah. So can you show it on the laptop? Yes. So no, go to a light on. Leave the light on. Yes. Huh. So now you see that the tip point. Yeah. Is this is the. So this is the actual tip. And when the sample is actually introduced, we can actually see the sample over here and move it as close as we want over here. So oh. what we do is we touch the sample first, then we get an idea that the distance is now zero, okay. and then we subtract hundred nanometers through it, and oh, then oh. we. So it's like touching and then retracting in a Retract. controlled way. Controlled. Wonderful. And that uh, uh, this box, what is this box doing? This so is a. This is a preamplifier. Okay. So the current that is the. PCA generate is on the scale of 2 ampere. Yes. And that you are amplifying it here. Yes. yes. So is this made? Where is this? So this is also made. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's right. Yeah. You can see that the whole system Yeah. Please. So you are measuring currents that are as far as 2 ampere. So that is what also detecting 2 ampere is close to impossible. So that is why we amplify the current first. So you are converting, converting current into current voltage. Into voltage, amplifying the voltage after. So we are uh, converting the current into voltage, okay. and then we are amplifying the voltage, and that is then detected through these token, token okay. amplifiers. So can we see this data? Yes, we can see these data, and the yeah. data is actually very interesting. Okay, so over to Ajinkya. Hello, we'll come back, back to you. <laughs> so can you Ajinkya show us the data that is taken on this uh, near field? Yeah, sure. So this is uh, okay. So this is how the pulse looks like. Like this is like a tip is angles to one point. Can you share the screen? Oh, okay. okay. So the tip is angles, and it takes one terahertz scan, as we have seen earlier in the particle domain, and then. And then basically instead of picosecond thing, now we have a very high frame rate camera. So this direction, these are x and y. This is like a complete map, and it's moving. So this is like completely moving thing. Like now in picosecond, so this is in picosecond, is it? Yes, this is in picosecond. You can clearly see these are in picosecond time scale. Now this like uh, the there there are holes. Now different uh, light or different different amount of light transmits through the holes differently. So we map. This light, how it is traveling through the light. Here we can see like it's moving in uh, like different different lights, and we can see the mapping of time domain how it looks like. So it's a special map of uh, like x y direction and in time how it evolves as a function. 
So this is a whole structure this through which four holes. Hole. So the, all the light is coming through that. Is yes. That oh, yes. that is, and this is happening in few picoseconds. Few picoseconds. So it's like a camera. It's like a camera of femtosecond time scale. It's uh-huh. a very very uh-huh. worst well, fastest uh-huh. camera, <laughs> or at least uh, to whatever. India's fastest. India's, India's fastest <laughs> camera. <laughs> Fast in uh, near field only. Okay. So that's really nice. Yeah. So, and uh, so this is how you get the uh, time information. Time but what about uh, frequency you were talking about, right? Okay. So let's go to frequency domain. Uh, now in frequency domain, like we have to base one is simulate the thing. What Rutraj and Utkar say, like we simulate the structures and then take the fabricate it and take the structures. So now basically you simulate this electric field in frequency domain. We have a video of frequency domain map. An actual experimental data. Okay. So, so this is how it is. It is the actual, actual computer, computer shows. Shows, and this is how the thing shows. Now, these are like one is in direction, one is in direction. It's like orientation thing, but more or less these are very similar. Now we can see different dipoles, quadrupoles, which are forming, and we can actually pick up in space, like in special map in near field domain, how these uh, frequencies are evolving. Okay. So. so this is like a multi-dimensional information. Multi-dimensional. It's like you can say a 4D image, oh, 4D mapping of Tara, yeah. XY, time and frequency. Okay, that's very nice. Uh, okay, so this is like uh, one of our very uh, things. So we make our first Tara TCA, which is indigenously developed on Indian grown, low temperature grown gallium RC9. Oh. So this so, is a very special crystal, huh? These are very special yes. crystal that is so, made in India now. Made in India. Okay. Now we can make our own sources. Maybe in few months you can see a company out of TIFR as well. And what is this uh, on the right side? Those triangles. Okay. These are zoom image of this. Now there are like bow tie uh, antenna. These are the structures are called as. Ah, they look antenna. like a bow tie. Yes. yes. I mean, which you put under uh, the collar. <laughs> so now you shine a light in between this bow tie, this generates a photo carrier, then you buy it. And what are those big uh, squares? Okay, these squares are fat to okay. make a contact with the bow tie. And so what are those uh, lines I see? So those these are lines are wire, wire. bonded to the fat so that electronic circuit can be bonded to extremely small. What features. material is that? Uh, what wire material is that? This is gold. Gold? Oh, <laughs> pure gold. Huh? It's a pure gold. Okay. okay. <laughs> So moving on further, like we our we recently published one of the papers with the shine by also like uh, Arnav sir and her student Manisha and uh, Professor Tamil Bay. So uh, Manisha has grown a beautiful crystal, vanadium top beta gallium oxide. Now what we have done is like polarimetry. Polarimetry in like just modified our TDS setup to do polarimetry to measure the uh, two different orientation transmission measures. So so you can make multiple uh, terahertz optics uh, or something like that yeah. from this crystal. So it's like a copolarization and cross polarizing component. Copolarization is basically which is uh, in, in plane to the incident electric field, and cross plane and cross polarization is basically cross to the in plane polar input polarization. Now these two are very complementary to each other. So okay. we were surprised when we saw this image for the first time. So what we did is like further we calculated it. Uh, refraction index and it, we, it's a published in optic quadratic express and we calculated its refraction index. Now the interesting part comes with ellipticity. Now we talk about Tarat polarizer, Tarat wave plates and all the things. Now this naturally occurring crystal can be used directly as a Tarat wave plate. For a certain set of frequency, it can, it can be a half wave plate and for another set of frequency, it can be a quarter wave plate. And its orientation, like sometimes it's left circular polarized and sometimes it's right circular polar. Oh. So we had a question. Is this is naturally occurring? Our lab has specialty of making a meta surface. Can we engineer this response? So some of these uh, responses are published in few few of our papers. Oh. And, okay. Other than uh, Tarat, what we do? So it's like Tarat emission spectroscopy. What happens is like as Vivek said, like we have. Yeah, we saw this. Just uh, we, uh, Dr. Vivek uh, showed us. Yes. Now, the thing is like this is a different laser. Now, this is a big laser like which is a million times stronger than what we have shown right now. What is it called? It's called as amplifier, amplifier laser. laser. Okay. 
So now what happens is like we send 800 nanometer, we generate different color using the optical parametric amplifier, and we shine different color from the crystal. Oh. And we see the terahertz emission property and study the topological nature in the terahertz emission oh. spectrum. Uh, this is like very new field, yeah. very emerging in the terahertz. Another part is like we commonly do optical pump terahertz probe. So optically pump the sample, excite the carriers at different different wavelengths and probe in, in optical regime or maybe in terahertz regime. So in optical regime, you see these electronic dynamics, electron dynamics, like um, you, electronic levels you study. In terahertz, you see these all these phonon modes, magnon modes, which are which are coming into the picture, which are very slow compared to electronic transmission. Also, the lifetime of carrier can be lifetime also. of carrier. These are like very basic things which, which you can study, study. using uh, pump probe techniques. Another thing um, we do in the lab is uh, uh, SHG polarimetry. So SHG is uh, nothing but a second harmonic generation. Now second harmonic generation is uh, generated by this. Uh, non central symmetric like there is some uh, uh, it's not symmetric in in, uh, in the crystal structure so we see second harmonic signal now what happens is like when we shine a light and do second <coughs> harmonic uh, polarimetry of that light now you can see in time resolution like in picosecond time scale how this crystal is becoming non central symmetric and we can map those non central so this is like published result in nature and this is what we have replicated in our lab, exactly identical. Oh. And this is our group, Photon. So there are like 20 members, 20 oh. members. <laughs> okay. So, so thank you. Thank you. So I hope all of you had a nice uh, trip. Uh, so thanks to Ajinkya, Utkarsh, Ruturaj, and Dr. Uh, Vivek. Yes, uh, of course. We are all. Mostly, uh, Time and again, you see that you showed for a parabolic mirror. Huh. So, what exactly uh, are they and how do they work? Why not, let's say, normal mirror? So, uh, we would like to avoid using lenses here because we work with very uh, short uh, pulses. So, this is called reflective optics. This is called uh, reflective optics. Uh, so everywhere we try to use reflective optics so that uh, you know the pulse shapes are not changed. There is no uh, dispersion. What is called as dispersion? Dispersion means uh, different uh, wavelengths or different color of light moves with different uh, times uh, or spreads out more. So we don't want that to happen, and therefore we have reflective optics. So that is why these parabolic mirrors. And idea is that they focus in a perpendicular direction you can you can also have them focus in different directions also but you have to design it like that so this is designed uh, the way that when the light falls uh, on its surface it uh, gets focused perpendicular to the direction uh, so it's important that so the parabolic mirrors are one of the vital components of the experiment yes because uh, instead of lens you can use this and avoid uh, dispersion Okay. So thank you, Professor Prabhu. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you online <laughs> So they are all here. Yeah, you can all stand here. <laughs> so it's all their uh, their work, huh? They are all credit goes to all of them. Their hard work. Uh, Others have not come, but thank you, Professor Prabhu. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. For thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming here. Yeah. So are we on time?